and I will be the moderator for today's press conference for the Federal, Provincial, and Territorial Minister of, of Agriculture Annual Meeting. Alors, bon après-midi, merci de vous joindre à nous. Je m'appelle Alison Saint-Jean, je serai la mo modératrice pour la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. I would like to start by welcoming our co-chairs of the meeting, the Honorable Maddie Claude Bibo, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food, and the Honorable David Merritt, Saskatchewan's Minister of Agriculture. And I'd also like to welcome the other provincial and territorial ministers participating in today's press conference. Alors, j'aimerais souhaiter la bienvenue au co-président de la Réunion, l'Honorable Marie-Claude Bibo, ministre fédérale de l'Agriculture et de l'Agroalimentaire, et l'Honorable David Merritt, Ministre de l'Agriculture de Saskatchewan. Uh, J'aimerais également souhaiter la bienvenue aux autres min ministres uh, provinciaux, uh, pardon, provinciaux et territoriaux uh, qui participent à la conférence de presse aujourd'hui. Uh, so we will begin uh, with Minister Bibo and Minister Merritt uh, delivering remarks, and this will be followed by a question and answer session reserved for members of the media. So we ask uh, that questions um, that you provide one central question and one follow up and that questions uh, can be directed to any of the ministers who have joined us today in person and virtually. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we will now begin. Alors, um, Madame la Ministre, la parole est à vous. Merci. Hello everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you for joining us. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered today on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis Nation. I'd like to thank my co-chair, Minister Merritt, and his team for hosting us here in Saskatoon for our annual meeting of Federal, Provincial, Territorial Ministers of Agriculture. I really enjoyed our visit at Ag in Motion on Wednesday. It's one more reminder that Canada is number one in agriculture innovation. Notre rencontre annuelle des ministres de l'agriculture ici à Saskatoon tombe à un moment très important pour le secteur. Nous avons eu des discussions productives pour s'assurer que le Canada demeure un chef de file mondial en agriculture durable. Je suis heureuse de vous annoncer que nous avons conclu les bases d'une entente en principe pour le prochain cadre stratégique qui se nommera dorénavant le Partenariat canadien pour une agriculture durable. After a series of positive and productive conservations this week, I'm pleased to announce that we have reached an agreement in principle for the are. next That's policy better. framework, which will be titled the Sustainable Canadian Agricultural Partnership. This is a major milestone. And here is no question, it comes at a critical time for our sector. The new agreement will inject half a billion dollars in new funds which represents a 25% increase in the cost shared portion of the partnership. With this financial commitment, we are providing solid foundation to support our producers while providing the necessary tools for the sector's sustainability and competitiveness. As part of this additional funding, a new $250 million Resilient Agriculture Landscape Program will be implemented to recognize ecological goods and services provided by the agriculture sector. This program will play a key role in rewarding farmers and ranchers for their environmental stewardship and contribute to the reduction of emissions from the sector. In fact, under this agreement, we will achieve a three to five megaton reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. This will be measured by a more robust result strategy for the framework and will include improved data sharing and results reporting amongst jurisdictions. Ce nouvel accord ajoute un demi milliard de dollars en nouveaux fonds, soit une augmentation de 25% de la portion à coût partagé du partenariat. Dans le cadre de ce financement supplémentaire, 250 millions de dollars seront dédiés au nouveau programme des paysages agricoles résilients, un programme qui reconnaît les biens et services écologiques fournis par le secteur agricole. Ce programme jouera un rôle clé dans la reconnaissance des pratiques environnementales des producteurs et productrices et permettra d'atteindre une réduction de 3 à 5 mégatonnes des émissions de gaz à effet de serre. Cet objectif sera mesuré grâce à des cibles plus solides et à un meilleur partage des données entre les gouvernements fédéral, provinciaux et territoriaux. Our business risk management programs are vital to helping producers across the country manage significant risks that threaten the viability of their farm and are beyond their capacity to manage. 
We know the importance of these programs and understand the need to find improvements. That's why, as part of our discussions this week, all ministers agreed to raising the agri-stability compensation rate from 70 to 80 percent starting in 2023. This important change represents an additional per year increase of up to $72 million with provincial and territorial contributions. I know this will make a meaningful difference for many family farms across the country who are faced with hardships that are out of their control. Nous savons à quel point les programmes de gestion de risque sont des outils importants pour faire face aux imprévus et aux événements hors du contrôle des producteurs. C'est pourquoi nous avons convenu d'augmenter le taux d'indemnisation d'agristabilité de 70 à 80 dès 2023. Ce changement important représente jusqu'à 72 millions de dollars par année et aura des impacts significatifs auprès des producteurs et des productrices qui subissent des pertes importantes. Our BRM programs must be reliable and readily available when producers need them most. That's why, in the coming year, we will complete our work in consultation with the industry on a new agri-stability model that will be faster, simpler, and more predictable in the coming year. As we look towards a more sustainable agricultural sector, we are also committed to identifying the best approach to integrate climate risk and readiness into our BRM programs. To ensure our farmers and ranchers become more resilient in the face of climate change, we will conduct a one-year BRM review period and work with industry to identify the best approach. As part of these efforts, each, each jurisdiction will identify potential incentives and conduct a pilot for producers who adopt environmental practices that also reduce production risks. And with ambitious, our ambitious plan, we are taking even further steps to promote environmental awareness resiliency. We have agreed that in order to receive agri-invest government contribution, producers with allowable net sales of, an, of at least $1 million will need an agri-environmental risk assessment by 2025. Building on the success of the actual Canadian Agricultural Partnership, this new agreement sets the stage for the next five years. Nous savons que nos programmes de gestion de risque doivent être améliorés. Nous, avons, nous allons consulter les représentants du secteur avant de faire les modifications proposées. Et afin d'encourager les bonnes pratiques agricoles qui rendent nos fermes plus résilientes face au changement climatique, nous allons procéder à une revue des programmes de gestion de risque et chaque province s'engage à mettre en place un programme pilote dans l'année qui, qui suivra la revue. Nous avons aussi convenu que les producteurs ayant des revenus nets admissibles de plus de 1 million de dollars au programme Agri-Investissement devront produire une analyse de risque ou un plan de gestion environnementale d'ici 2025. Our vision for Canada to be recognized as a leader in sustainable agriculture aligns with the work of producers who are passionate about health and uh, about the health of their land and animals. This is how we help the sector grow and remain competitive. And this is also how we continue to feed Canadians and a growing global population. Along with the new agreement, we looked at ways to maximize Canada's potential to feed Canadians and the world through global partnership collaboration and support for the sector. We discussed current trade, market access, and supply chain issues, including the latest developments on the war in Ukraine. This will build on the federal government's work to support grain storage in Ukraine, strengthen Canada's supply chain, and help Canadian farmers manage high input costs by reducing interest costs under the advanced payment program. Furthermore, we discussed labor challenges and how we can collaborate to ensure the sector has the skilled and reliable workforce it needs. This will support our national agricultural labor strategy to develop short and long-term solutions to the labor shortages across the value chain. We also heard from the Retail Code of Conduct Working Group co-chairs who provided a progress report. I thank the industry committee and I look forward to their report in November. To help Canadian pork producers manage ongoing risk, we advance discussions around African swine fever and preparedness. We also heard about approaches to address the unique regulatory challenges with domestic trade. 
as part of our approach, we have agreed to move forward with a pilot to, in, to ease the unique challenges associated with the movement on food within the city of Lloydminsters. And other pilot, program, pilot projects are also being developed in other provinces. This will, no doubt, offer lessons to improve other existing challenges associated to domestic trade. Finally, during our discussions this week, we also all agreed on the need to work together and with the sector's value chain to reduce fertilizer-related emissions while maintaining competitiveness and Canada's reputation as a top producer of quality crops. Alors, parmi les autres sujets importants dont les ministres ont discuté, il y a la sécurité alimentaire, la pénurie de main-d'oeuvre, le code de conduite des détaillants, la fièvre porcine africaine et la réduction des émissions liées aux engrais, et aussi le commerce international et interprovincial. Pour conclure, notre rencontre a été très productive. The Sustainable Canadian Agricultural Partnership will help the sector rise to the challenge of climate change, support Canadian producers, capture new markets, and meet the demands of consumers at home and abroad. Again, thank you, Minister Merritt, for welcoming us here in Saskatchewan, in, in Saskatchewan, and thank you to the other provincial and territorial ministers for your work and collaboration on this historic agreement. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Minister, and thank you for co-chairing, and uh, thank you for coming to Saskatchewan. And uh, we were very pleased to host the meetings here in Saskatoon, and we really want to thank everybody for joining us here today and joining us here through the conference. It was an excellent opportunity to meet with colleagues from across Canada to discuss some of the most important issues facing agriculture sector. We had the chance to hear from firsthand from industry this week about the opportunities and advancements in the sector as well as some of the challenges they are facing. At the Ag in Motion event, we saw the benefits of research and technology in action. Exhibitors demonstrated how innovation is helping to increase productivity and minimize impacts on the environment. We heard from leaders across the industry who are focused on sustainability, helping Canada meet the growing domestic and global demand for food. Hearing from, from producers firsthand reinforces to us as ministers, the importance of the decisions we make here today. We know we have to get it right to ensure Canadian farmers remain globally competitive. We believe the agreement in principle reached today is the key to supporting Canadian agriculture, ensuring that we have a strong, competitive and resilient sector well into the future. The next policy framework must help producers respond to challenges, including climate change, while also making investments in areas such as markets and trade and research. The increase in the funding envelope for strategic programs is important in ensuring we, we are keeping pace and are able to address all priority areas. Moving forward, we will work with our stakeholders to develop and design programming specific to our provinces. We are also committed to an effective business risk management suite that meets the objectives and principles of the program. The improvements made in our business risk management programs demonstrate our continued commitment to making this suite more timely, equitable, and easier to understand. I know our industry has been asking for some of these changes, like the increased compensation rate, for some time. Today, we are delivering on that additional support for our producers. There are a lot of reasons to be optimistic today. Canadian agriculture is the most sustainable agriculture sector in the world and we are committed to ensuring that our safe, healthy, high quality products continue to feed the growing world. We will continue to stand up for our producers in important issues that include the, the federal fertilizer emission reduction target. Saskatchewan has been a champion of more effective fertilizer use and it's important that these targets do not hamper long-term growth and competitiveness or commitment to address global food security. It has been a pleasure hosting this event in Saskatoon and an honor being co-chair at such an important time of the sector. Saskatchewan will be passing the federal provincial territory co-chair role to New Brunswick, who we know will, be, will excel in the role. We have a great story to tell about Canadian agriculture and as ministers, we look forward to continuing to help tell that story. I am pleased to see all partners come together today to demonstrate our ability to collaborate on such very important topics. Thank you again for joining us here today. Thank you. Thank you, ministers. Uh, before we take questions, I would like to remind everyone that we'll be taking one main question and a follow-up question if needed, and to please address your questions to the specific minister that you'd like to answer. 
Alors, afin de commencer la période de questions et de réponses, euh, j'aimerais vous rappeler euh, qu'une question et un suivi par médias seront permis. Uh, alors, veuillez poser votre question aussi au ministre uh, de votre choix. Um, so, we'll begin with questions in the room. Well, I can tell you that I was in Alberta and Manitoba and Saskatchewan in the last 10 days or so, and I'm meeting with many farmers in the field. Uh, I know how much they care for the environment and uh, how much they, they invest in new practices and new, in new technologies to lower their emission as much as possible. And uh, this is great and we want to do more. So this is why we have an ambitious target. That's, it's true. And I want to make sure that everyone understand that it's the, the target is about reducing the emissions caused by fertilizer, not reducing fertilizer. Uh, directly and the idea is to invest in research and innovation and we i'm sure that we will find uh through you know new uh new type of fertilizer through uh better practices through new technologies ways uh to be even more sustainable because i know that our farmers are working and ranchers are already work, working hard in this direction and i think it's just want to pull out uh, the news release also says that fertilizer emission targets weren't on the agenda were they were they not Uh, it was not on the agenda, no. but I, I've been asked during the meeting uh, to add it to the agenda and was pleased to do so. We, we had a good conversation on the subject, and I'm sure that we will work collaboratively. Uh, there's the consultation that is ongoing right now. I know that all my colleagues will be participating to the consultation to bring new information and that the stakeholders and the different representatives of the different sectors will also contribute to uh, the you know, the, the path forward. And the idea is to produce the more sustainable food in the world. And uh, I think we are all working towards this objective. We'll do a call up for more questions in the room. You, yeah, you can use the mic just over here. Uh, Minister Bebo, I'm not sure if you're aware there was a report from the Canadian Agri-Food Policy Institute this week uh, saying that tying environmental programs to business risk management programs is not a good idea. So I guess I'm wondering why that's still an option. Well, we are investing significant uh, money in our business risk management. Uh, the average used to be 1.6 billion, but I'm pretty sure that we reached the 2 billion last year with the, 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 the drought in, in, in the prairies in Ontario and the flood in BC. Uh, so this is why we have agreed that we will take the coming year um, to proceed with a review uh, to evaluate you know, how we can uh, integrate climate risk because it is uh, a new and a bigger risk than it used to be. And we're, it's, it's obvious that farmers are the first one to, to you know, feel these uh, climate change. So we will proceed with the review and uh, move forward with pilot projects. And these could be different from a region to another, mm -hmm. depending on the results of the review. That's right. No, no, I would just, uh, I just would echo what the minister said. We had a, we had a good discussion about it and, and uh, really came to a good conclusion saying, look, we'll review it for a year. And then each province will probably have a different pilot. And we're going to collaborate between the provinces too on this, just to see who is doing what for pilots. And, and that will, that could go out to the duration of 2025. And then we'll evaluate it there just to see where the benefits are. Okay, you also said that, uh we can expect a faster, simpler agri-stability. That program has been under review forever, it seems. Um, can we actually expect a different program, say a year from now? Our officials have been working very hard in the last year, and I think we have concrete proposals to uh, put forward, but we want to be sure that we consult with the stakeholders before we yeah. make them yeah. you know, happen. Fine. Yeah. Are there any further questions in the room? Um, okay, so I'll now turn things over to Cameron, our virtual moderator. Alors, Cameron, la parole est à vous. Thank you very much, Allison. Um, so just a reminder that this virtual question and answer session is reserved for members of the media. Reporters will need to identify their name and media affiliation in the chat to ask a question, and one question and one follow-up follow will be permitted. Uh, alors, en français, merci, Allison. Uh, une rappel que cette période de questions et réponses est réservée aux médias. 
Les journalistes doivent inscrire leur nom et affiliation médiatique dans le chat pour poser une question. Ceux et celles qui utilisent un téléphone peuvent faire étoile 9 pour lever la main. Et une question et une suivie par les médias seront permis. Um, so we will start uh, with the questions in the chat. So uh, first question uh, is from Kelvin Hepner at Real Agriculture. Real Agriculture, please go ahead, Kelvin. Thank you, ministers, for taking my question. Uh, I guess for Minister Bibo, if it's half a billion dollars more, does that make the total funding envelope $3.5 billion or what's the total funding amount? Uh, so it used to be $2 billion for the cost shared portion and $1 billion for the federal portion. I'm still working on the federal portion, but it's, uh, yeah, it's around $3.5 you get. It's, it, it's okay to say that for, for the time being, yes. Yeah. Minister Merritt, is that the 25% that you and some of the other provinces were looking for? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's where we were uh, going into this meeting. Uh, we were all had kind of come to consensus on the 25%, and uh, we were happy when the federal government uh, put that offer on the table as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so next question is from Heather Schofield from the Toronto Star. Please go ahead, Heather. Hi, thanks for taking my questions. Um, Minister Bibo, I'm wondering if you could comment on the agreement between um, uh, Russia and Ukraine um, to ship grain through the Black Sea and how that um, changes your, your thoughts and, and the, the, the provincial minister's approaches to food security? Well, we wish the best uh, to the Ukrainian people. Uh, it is a very difficult and unjustified you know, war that they are, they are facing. And it has an impact on global food security. So I uh, sincerely hope that this agreement will move forward and that they will be able to export uh, their grain and other food produced to, uh, to countries who are in need. Obviously, we are following the, the, the situation closely and our farmers are doing their very best also to complement and to, to contribute to food security in the world. Okay, thanks for that. But um, you know, you you mentioned briefly um, and have mentioned in the past about how Canadians are involved in lending their expertise in storage and shipment, and and hoping to also to produce more here and in to 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 alleviate the food shortages that we see around the world. Does this deal today change any any of that? Any of those plans? Uh, well, U Ukraine is a is a very important uh, food supplier to many countries. Um, you know that we cannot change uh, very quickly when we are in, in the spring when you know or late winter like when the, the war started it was hard for our producers to change their production some you know crops were already seeded and the, the plants and the rotation plants so they made a very important effort to increase their production but never to the level of you know Ukrainian production so I there's the world is, is big enough for all of us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so next question is from Jake Edmiston at the Financial Post. Jake, please go ahead. Hi, Minister. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I, I'm hoping you can provide some more detail on what you heard from industry on the uh, state of negotiations on a grocery code of conduct. I didn't hear the last part. The code of the code of conduct. The code of conduct. Uh, so uh, the coach, the two co-chairs representing the industry uh, made a presentation to the ministers. They had submitted their report uh, a few days ago. We had the opportunity to look at it. Uh, it, it. They are making progress. Actually, they have included, they have added a new representative of the industry uh, to their discussions, uh, people who are maybe closer to the field, if I may say it this way, to get a better understanding of the challenges that they are facing. We can see real progress. They have asked uh, for a delay until November uh, to, to come back to us with uh, more concrete action and the code of conduct uh, as close as, as it could be uh, to, uh, to implementation. Okay, thanks for that. So it's been more than a, it's about, been about a year that these discussions have been ongoing. I think they've gone past two, two uh, of the FPT's deadlines now. Um, I think Minister Lamontagne, you said at the time, uh, if, uh, if the industry can't do it, the government will do it for them. So uh, at what point does the government intervene and what does, what does that look like if they do intervene? Um, we can, uh, we have been able to see the progress. Uh, that they are really committed uh, to a, a very concrete result this time. It's, uh, it's not us who have extended the process. They came to us saying, we are confident that by November, 
will be there. Um, so, you know, having seen the progress and the commitment of the co-chairs and of the industry, uh, we agreed to this, uh, to this extension. I think it is important that the solution come from the industry, but uh, they know that we are taking this seriously and we want, uh, we want a solution to the situation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, prochaine question vient de Noémie Rondon uh, de Radio-Canada. Noémie, vas-y. Oui, ma question est pour euh, Mme Marie-Claude de Bibot. Euh, concernant là, le fait que l'objectif fédéral de réduction des émissions d'engrais, la, la Saskatchewan et euh, l'Alberta qui sont déçus de l'objectif, est-ce euh, qu'on pense peut-être retourner un peu en négociation, voire un peu euh, en consultation avec ces deux provinces-là pour peut-être revoir les objectifs qui sont prévus? On parle de réduire les émissions causé par les engrais et non de réduire les engrais. C'est très important comme, comme nuance, c'est plus qu'une nuance même, c'est très concret. Alors, euh, l'objectif a été fixé. Je pense que c'est important qu'on ait un, un objectif qui est ambitieux. En ce moment, on est en consultation. L'enjeu et l'importance que tout le monde contribue à cette, cette consultation-là, c'est vraiment d'avoir de quelle façon est-ce qu'on peut aller le plus loin possible dans cette direction-là. De quelle façon? Bien, entre autres, en investissant dans la recherche, dans l'innovation, euh, on va certainement... Je pense qu'il y a des solutions qu'on ne connaît même pas, mais qu'on va connaître dans les prochaines, qui vont être développées dans, dans les prochaines années, euh, que ce soit de, de nouveaux types de fertilisants, de meilleures pratiques, une application de, de, de ces engrais-là plus spécifiques, euh, de des nouveaux équipements aussi. Donc, euh, l'idée, c'est vraiment d'inviter euh, toute la communauté agricole, je dirais, à participer à cette consultation-là pour voir comment on peut faire ensemble pour aller le plus loin possible pour réduire les émissions euh, causées par le secteur agricole, mais entre autres causées par l'utilisation des engrais. Parfait. Puis, est-ce qu'on parle beaucoup de nouvelles technologies qui pourraient permettre d'atteindre ces objectifs-là? Est-ce que, si c'est nécessaire, on va être prêt à supporter euh, les communautés ici pour justement s'approvisionner en équipements qui permet d'atteindre ces, euh, ces objectifs-là? Bien, il y a déjà le programme des technologies propres euh, en ce moment. Euh, c'est un investissement de 495 millions de dollars et qui vise spécifiquement à réduire les émissions de gaz à effet de serre. Donc, on peut parler d'agriculture de précision, on peut parler de chauffage plus éco-énergétique, euh, des poulaillers, euh, on parle de, de biotechnologie. Donc, toutes les, les technologies, les séchoirs à grains, évidemment, euh, donc ce sont euh, des exemples de technologies propres qui nous permettent de réduire les émissions, mais il y a aussi réduire les, euh, dans le, une meilleure, euh, il y a aussi le programme euh, On Farm Climate Action, le programme euh, de solutions agricoles euh, pour le climat à la ferme. Donc, euh, on, on, ce programme-là est administré par une douzaine de partenaires sur le terrain et un des objectifs très spécifiques, c'est justement faire une meilleure gestion des engrais. Merci. Uh, so next question comes from Peter Mitham at Country Life in BC. Peter, please go ahead. Thanks. Um, question for Minister Bebo and possibly uh, Minister Popham. Um, it'd be great to get a few more details or specifics of the pilot on interprovincial trade because I know here in BC, um, trade and meat has been between provinces has been a question also wine and uh, in particular with the meat file. Um, there's talk about harmonization with the CFIA inspection protocols and how that could dovetail or uh, complicate the inspection regime here in BC. This is an issue that has been raised by the ministers uh, a year ago and CFIA has worked uh, very hard on this. Uh, we are at the point that we uh, can, we will move forward with the pilot project for Lundminster and there are uh, other projects that are uh, being worked on uh, in Quebec, Ontario, Manitoba and British Columbia. I think you're, no, actually no. But because you, you mentioned you wanted to speak to Minister uh, Popham as well, so. Uh, Thank you, Peter. It's great to hear your voice. I uh, can't wait to download uh, more to you when I get back to British Columbia, but uh, we'll be watching these pilots with great interest and there's a lot to learn. And hopefully by the end of the pilot project that we'll be able to implement um, a different ways of working a lot easier between provinces. Great, thanks. And then just uh, the other question that's on my mind is, um, 
around business risk management programs and the how producers who are impacted by um, disease could be supported. I know in British Columbia, um, our mink industry was phased out uh, in response to concerns over COVID-19. And I was just, and the, there was a hope of some uh, provincial support and also federal support through agri-recovery for those producers, but that was not available. Apparently they weren't eligible in fact. So I was just wondering if um, there, will, there are any provisions within the pack, within the programming uh, discussed for producers impacted, say, by COVID, um, by African swine fever, or any other diseases that may uh, pose a public health risk. You go first. I'll follow. So, uh, <laughs> the the business risk management program, as you know, uh, have different objectives. Agri stability will kick in when uh, producers face uh, a significant decrease in their margin. Agri stability, agri stability, agri recovery. Uh, it is more when. Uh, so often following a disaster and um, the, the, the farmers will have to reconstruct. It's, it's often a, sometimes a, a reconstruction uh, effort. Uh, there's the uh, agri-insurance that will be targeted to, to culture and often related to weather issues. Uh, and agri-invest, that should be the first one to kick in because it's an easy access to money for producers. Um, do you have more specifics that you want to add? Um, well, maybe I'll just address the specific issue around uh, mink farming. That was a, it's a very unfortunate situation where um, th there was a health issue uh, and it was led by the Ministry of Health. But we are working with the industry and uh, we're hoping that they'll be, be able to transition to a different type of production. Thanks. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, so next question comes from Alex Ballingall from the Toronto Star. Alex, please go ahead. Hey, thanks very much. Um, just going back to the Ukraine-Russia grain shipment deal, um, the number reported uh, for grain, I'm not sure exactly what grains exactly, but 22 million tons could potentially be shipped unblocked from the Black Sea ports. I'm wondering if you can give us an idea of, uh, do you expect that to reduce global prices, how, how will that impact sort of the global supply in general? Is, is, is that a, a huge amount? Will it, will it move prices that have been going up? Uh, what can we expect there? Well, I, th I think that's probably highly speculative, probably in, in light of what's uh, going on in, in the grain industry as a, as a whole. I mean, uh, obviously with last year's severe drought right across North America, it obviously had an impact in, on all grains. So. I think there's still a lot of there's still a lot of need and a lot of want for the grains that are there. Um, is it going to have an impact? I think it's too early to tell at this time. But I mean, you'd have to ask the business community if it's going to impact it. Okay, thanks for that. And and just uh, uh, on that as well, um, I understand that Canada wants to help ship out. This question for Minister Bebo, um, help move that grain. Could, do you have any details on exactly how Canada can help? in terms of the logistics of moving that stuff out of there? Yes, we have recently uh, announced a $52 million uh, investment and it is directed to um, buying mobile storage uh, equipment uh, for Ukraine and uh, uh, also laboratory equipment for them to be able to uh, um, uh, emit uh, export certificates, so to validate the quality of the produce uh, to be exported. Thank you very much. Uh, alors, prochaine question vient de Myriam Laplante de La Terre de Chez Nous. Myriam, allez-y. Oui, euh, bonjour Madame Dubo. Euh, <coughs> je me demandais si on avait euh, déterminé si le code de conduite serait à caractère volontaire ou obligatoire. Ce soit à caractère euh, volontaire et c'est pour ça qu'on donne on a accepté de donner un délai supplémentaire euh, euh, à l'industrie parce qu'on a senti que vraiment ils avaient fait des progrès euh, ils ont inclus plus de représentants autour de la table dans les derniers mois ce qui leur a permis d'avancer maintenant euh, ils ont besoin de encore un, un, un peu plus de temps ils étaient assez confiants de pouvoir arriver à une entente volontaire OK, parce que c'est ça, je me demandais, euh, dans le fond, qu'est-ce qui a changé concrètement? Vous dites qu'il y a des améliorations, mais c'est quoi exactement? Parce qu'ils ont déposé un rapport d'étape au mois d'avril. C'est quoi la différence entre maintenant et le mois d'avril? Oui, bonjour Myriam, André Lamontagne. 
Euh, non, ce qu'on a vu vraiment là, dans la présentation puis le rapport qu'ils nous ont soumis, c'est toute une liste de points sur lesquels ils ont réussi à résoudre, à s'entendre, les points qu'il restait encore à, 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 à négocier ou à travailler ensemble. Mais ce qui est vraiment sorti, c'est autant de la part de M. Graydon que Mme Brisebois, c'est leur engagement puis aussi euh, à quel point ils sont... Sont, sont, sont positifs quant à, à, à la, la, la possibilité très réelle d'arriver au-delà du délai qu'ils nous ont demandé là, avec un, une entente là, pour un code de conduite là, qui pourrait être mis en application au Canada. Là. Merci. Uh, so, next question from Dylan Robertson at the Winnipeg Free Press. Dylan, please go ahead. Uh, hi there. Uh, Minister Bibo, can you please tell us a bit about choosing a voluntary grocery code of conduct when a lot of Canadians are seeing the price of groceries go up, there was the star report on profits of the sector. Is it really the right decision to be taking? First objective of the code of conduct, I would say it's, it's really to um, ensure that the relation between the producer, the, the processors and the retailers uh, are fair and transparent and predictable. Um, so it uh, it might have an impact a positive impact on the the, the price of, of food uh, but really the main objective the first objective when we started the exercise was really to make sure that there was a, a fair uh, playing field for the um, the stakeholders in in the food value chain uh, and uh, a question for minister johnson and possibly minister Merriam. Uh, how do you react to Minister Bebo's fertilizer comments that she sure will find ways through technology for better fertilizer? Does that actually work for you on the proposed timeline, or are these targets unrealistic? Well, I mean, th that was one of our concerns, and I think uh, the minister answered it uh, probably the best way I think you could answer it is that, and that's one thing that we've always said too, let's, <laughs> let's find uh, these uh, emission reductions through innovation, technology, and research. Uh, a lot of the farmers in Western Canada right across this country are doing everything they possibly can to obviously protect their land, but still to grow food to feed the world. So let's look at uh, ways that we can do it and, and, and try and approach it that way. So through research, innovation, technology, new crop developments, all that uh, uh, ties in. If we, if we can grow production and, uh, and not increasing uh, fertilizer use, is that what we're achieving the target at and building it on intensity growth? So that's uh, the discussion that we like that we had that day. Thank you. Uh, so we have time for one more question, uh, and the question will the question and follow up will come from Janice McGregor from CBC News. Janice, please go ahead. Thanks very much for this, ministers. Um, mostly a question for Minister Bebo, although if any of the provincial ministers want to comment, they're more than welcome. Um, Canada continues to collect a thirty five percent tariff on Russian uh, fertilizer uh, imports. Why is the government continuing to collect this tariff, knowing the effect it has on food prices uh, in this country and on the competitiveness of Canadian cash crop exports? As you know, the tariff is part of our economic sanction. Uh, to Russia, but we are investing significantly to support the agriculture sector. Uh, we have uh, recently improved the uh, advanced payment program. Uh, first, we made it more flexible and farmers were able to, to uh, get the, uh, the, the loan uh, earlier in the season. And second, we have increased the interest-free portion of the advanced payment program uh, from $100,000 to $250,000, which represent probably $61 million uh, saving for farmers over two years. And you've seen today, we have announced uh, an increase of 25% in uh, the cost share portion of our partnership agreement for the five coming years. So we are investing significantly in our farmers. Actually, last year, 2021, was the, uh, the, the uh, historic year in terms of budget. It was the biggest budget for the Department of Agriculture of Canada with $4 billion. So we do uh, believe and support our farmers in, the, in different ways. I guess, though, my question is is a bit more specific than that. Um, about a dozen uh, groups representing uh, Eastern Ontario, uh, sorry, not Eastern, Eastern Canadian, Ontario, Quebec, Atlantic Canada, uh, cash crop farmers, canola, bean, grain farmers, and also representatives of the fertilizer sector, uh, again this week called on the federal government to provide very targeted 
support, perhaps a rebate of this 35% levy, uh, which has increased their input costs specifically, uh, perhaps hurting them more than it hurts Russia even, uh, wondering why we're doing this and saying if they won't uh, sort of drop this this uh, levy or rebate it somehow, this, this tariff, uh, why won't the government then uh, take steps to ensure that Canada can become self-sufficient in fertilizer? They're, they're just not feeling like they're being heard on this in a year when there are so many inflationary pressures on those cash crops. We definitely invest in the uh, in the fertilizer industry in different ways uh, to to face the situation and yes uh, to be more uh, self sufficient. Uh, a few weeks ago, I announced uh, right here in Sask uh, in Saskatchewan uh, a significant investment for uh, a fertilizer company. We are once again investing significantly in research and innovation. Uh, that will allow us to uh, be less resilient or to find alternative markets uh, for what we need. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Uh, so this concludes the virtual question and answer session. I'll now turn things back over to Alison. Alors, merci beaucoup. Uh, ceci conclut la session virtuelle de questions et réponses. Uh, je cède encore la parole à Alison. Well, thank you everyone for joining us here today. This concludes our press conference. Alors, ceci conclut la, la conférence de la presse aujourd'hui. Merci. Merci. Thank you. See you. Thank Safe you. travels. Yes. So, Safe travels. Okay.